In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a research assistant in Sim Theory. And the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we have a series of research style MCPs installed so we can access the information that we need as part of our research assistant. So you can see here, I've got some pre-installed. I've got the finance MCP, which allows me to get things like balance sheets and income statements and stock prices from the market. I've got XDeep Research, which gives me uh, basically sentiment analysis from what people are saying. I've got Perplexity, Grok Deep Research, Academic Search, Google Search, and Firecrawl. And Firecrawl allows it to actually find some of the results or find some of the company URLs and go and crawl the, the websites to interpret the data even further. So I've got a pretty powerful stack of tools in here. But if you wanted to add additional ones, for example, under finance, you might want to use something like Yahoo Finance as well, just to cross check the information or under research, you might want to get say government data in the US, so you can install data.gov. It really just depends on what sources that you need for your particular research assistant as to what you would configure and install here. So the next thing we need to do is create our specific research assistant. Now, of course you could use the built-in default assistant or really any assistant that you could create to do this. But if you want it to follow a specific research methodology and get a specific output type, so it to format a report a certain way, it's always best to create an assistant. So let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna give our assistant a name, we'll call it researcher. And then we'll go and tab over here to instructions. And this is where we can use some really helpful templates that are built in as a starting point for our research assistant. So we'll select researcher. Uh, and you'll see in here, we have a prompt for, you are a world-class researcher. Your primary goal is to provide accurate, well-sourced and comprehensive information to the user. So it's got some core directives here, including verifying uh, information from reputable sources, um, citing sources clearly, and then down here, tool usage. So it says you will heavily rely on academic search engines, deep research tools like Perplexity and Grok, and crawling to gather information. We will add in here finance MCP. So we can specify tools for this particular research methodology uh, for it to use, that we just want it to use no matter what, uh, uh, instead of just relying on it picking out what it should do or use. Uh, okay, so that's just a rough sense of working with our instructions here, but obviously you could outline your own core directives and your own tool usage and your own process uh, in order to do research, but this is a great start. So let's create the research assistant and you'll see it immediately switches to it when we create it. And then we're gonna paste in our prompt here, which says, I wanna understand if Tesla is successful with the Optimus robot, and basically it reaches mass production, what stocks might I invest in today that would be considered undervalued if the mass market adoption of robotic, in particular Optimus, is successful in the market? I also say, please consult multiple sources and use sources throughout the report, list all sources used at the end. So let's send uh, this prompt and see what kind of research it comes up with. So you can see it immediately goes and uses Grok Deep Search here. So it's using a Grok's Deep Research tool and it will use a number of other research tools here, I'm sure in a moment as it works away. Now, this process can actually take quite a while because it's gonna go and consult many different sources and uh, you know go off and do its sort of agentic workflow here to get the best research result. So while it's working away, now you can actually just go and open another tab and uh, switch assistant if you want, switch model if you want, and go off and work on your next task. So just to demonstrate that, I'll say make funny cat pictures. And so <laughs> obviously not, uh, the most productive use of time, but you can see it'll go off now and uh, be making funny cat pictures in the background while we wait for our research task to complete. So I'll speed the video up from here just so you can see this research uh, complete and then I'll talk you through what it did. Okay, so our research is now complete. And uh, if we scroll back up, we can see that it did quite a bit of work. It was looking for undervalued ASX robotics and semiconductor stocks after identifying what the supply chain might look like up here. 
it's consulted numerous sources and I can find them up here, what it was looking through. Uh, and then it's given us a, an overview and a timeline of the Optimus robot uh, progress and what it thinks will happen. Some key challenges here, investment opportunities for Australian investors. And then it's gone through and actually listed very specific stocks that might benefit from these, you know, robots uh, entering into the market. So on semiconductor, uh, Tyrodyne, I might be pronouncing that wrong, Rockwell Automation, and then it's got a number of other companies, all with sources throughout here. So you can see where it was able to source that data from. It's also given investment strategy recommendations here. Um, and then it's listed all of these sources that it used at the bottom here. Now, the funniest thing about this is while it was working away, I was also able to produce these hilarious cat images while I was working on another task in the background. So that's an introduction to how to create your own research assistant uh, like we just did in here and complete deep research using multiple tasks. Now, if you want to more output or less output or a specific format you can do that as well and you can also try adding to your initial prompt or a follow-up prompt to then go and take this document and create a microsoft word document or a google document uh, in order to present the information you could also create a slideshow out of it so you can just ask it what you'd like to do next and it'll take this information and put it into the format you want that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like down below and I'll see you in the next one.